गुड मॉर्निंग सर लक्ष्मण सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग मैम मीनाक्षी मैम यू कैन स्टार्ट वी हैव ऑलमोस्ट वन एट वन जीरो एट पार्टिसिपेंट्स यू कैन वेलकम लक्ष्मण सर रीड इज प्रोफाइल एंड यू कैन स्टार्ट welcome very welcome good morning to all of you and uh, welcome lakshman sir uh, it is a great uh, you have to just give us the plagiarism is the main role at that time how we can avoid it and what how we can do the self plagiarism so lakshman i is an assistant professor and also a leading technical training team in hindustan college of engineering and technology kambetur india he is the member in board of director and also chief research scientist at in british columbia canada he is a global lead chapter leader in course virtuals also handled various session on ai iot blockchain to near east university turkey he himself involves in research and expertise in artificial intelligence and blockchain technologies and currently involved in collaborative research with member of malaysian turkish american canadian chinese australian south korean universities all rounder he did he undergraduate in group of institutions and completed his phd pg in the university his doctoral degree is in anna university chennai his research is on synthetic web services and part of his phd work was funded by south korea he has a passion towards development he holds a international certification of sun certified java programmer he is the meticulous with the programming language like java python and php he holds a certification in data science from john hopkins university united state he also holds the amazon cloud architect certification from the amazon web services his special interest to write special issues for publishers like elsewhere inter science springer and iti global thank you so much sir it's a great privilege to all of us and uh, that is the great platform so that we can um, just share the words like plagiarism how we can do it thank you and welcome uh, sir please start your session welcome sir welcome lakshman sir thank you sir thank you so much so good morning to all so hope you all are safe and healthy so it's indeed it's a pleasure for me to join this session so before getting into the context i would like to personally thank uh, balamurgen sir uh, meenakshi ma'am and also the uh, management of galkotia uh, i mean to invite me as a guest speaker for this uh, one of the great event i have ever seen across the globe <laughs> so congrats to all of you right so uh, today we are going to see uh, a lot more about plagiarism so uh what is plagiarism and how it comes and what we have to do and what are the consequences we face because of plagiarism so that is the agenda of our program so just a minute hold on let me share my screen <laughs> So 
this is what we are working on. So what we can do is in today's session, we all going to discuss on plagiarism and let's prevent how to avoid plagiarism altogether, right? So coming to the point. So before getting into the context, I would like to share, I would like to start with my favorite quote, like, so uh, this is like a borrowed thoughts is like borrowed money. So it only shows the poverty of the borrower, right? Okay. So this quote is given by Lady Margaret in Blessing Time. So I want to share you like, so we thought as a researcher, we, I mean, uh, we steal some things from some other's papers and we, and we show off to others like, hey, I have written a good paper, but it shows the poverty of yourself, right? So it doesn't mean that you are, you are technically so, so the thing is that we should not borrow thoughts. It's like borrowing money. Fine. So coming to the context, like, so what is plagiarism? So plagiarism is very simple. If I want to tell you in a layman words, it's like stealing something from someone. So you could ask me like, so uh, if I steal some words, is it plagiarism? Of course it is. If you steal anything, it is called as plagiarism. And in the slide, I have given you a content like uh, keywords, which if you use these stuffs, we call this as plagiarism, right? So I have given like a cheating, a permission, a credit, a quotation, a fraud, avoiding, <laughs> paraphrasing, copyright. So these are the key terms where you can find, and I call everything as plagiarism. So in to be honest and to and to convey you in a single word or in a simple word, I would say you like a plagiarism is stealing something from someone. <coughs> okay, right. So coming into the point. So, I mean, as a researchers, we could have dealt with this problem for so long, right? Okay. So you might have done, you might have written papers, you might have written uh, book chapters, you might have written white papers or something else, or even during your schoolings, you, I mean, in your grade, you, you could have written some papers and thesis as well. And with or without intentionally, you have committed plagiarism. So now I'm going to differentiate you like uh, what are the plagiarism steps are available and how you can avoid that, right? Okay. So as far as I concern, we need to address the four types. These are the four problems of plagiarism. And I'm going to tell you how we can avoid that. So this is, is what very much I'm concerned about. Okay. So there are four types of plagiarism, which I emphasize is, so number one is a direct plagiarism and number two is self plagiarism. And third one is mosaic plagiarism. And the fourth one is accident plagiarism. So I will tell you like, so what is direct plagiarism? It's very simple. When you try to copy someone's content or someone's transcription word by word. So if you copy someone's transcription word by word, and that is called as direct plagiarism. So it means you are trying to uh, steal or take the content from someone which is already existing. And that is termed as direct plagiarism. And coming to self plagiarism. So what is this self plagiarism? Self-plagiarism is nothing but let, I mean, let me give you a small example. Like, so just take like you are writing some paper in a school, in your schooling level, and you have completed that and you have submitted to your professor. And this and, and that and that can be published or that cannot be published. No, that is not a matter. And now you are trying to use the same content that into your college level. So what you are trying to comment is you are going to use the same content in your school and you are reusing the same content in your college. So this is termed as self plagiarism and this is completely unethical. So you should not do self plagiarism. This is completely dishonest. And coming to a point called Mossack 
<coughs> so what is this mosaic plagiarism mosaic is nothing but so previously i have started this presentation with the code which was given by blessington so let us imagine like i am going to use that code somewhere in my article so i am not going to change its word or phrase i am using it exactly by as it so that is always called as mosaic plagiarism so whenever you try to use any <coughs> any verbs adverbs or any quotes so what you have to do is you need to give it by double quotes so there are two ways where you can you can always end up in mosaic plagiarism that is number one is you simply copy some quotes from someone's content and you paste it without citing it and the second thing is you try to copy the code and you try to change the synonym say for example you are trying to get a code from a japanese japanese guy and you are trying to change that code according to the indian style or to an us style so that is means you are trying to synonymize the things according to your natural language so this is called as mosaic plagiarism where this is also unethical you should not do that and coming to the next plagiarism is called as accidental plagiarism so what is this accidental plagiarism accidental plagiarism is very simple like we write paper you write content without in unintentionally or without knowing you might have used the content of others without citing it so this is called as un accidental plagiarism so as far as plagiarism is concerned guys like you should not commit these four stuffs like direct self mosaic and accidental <laughs> right and there comes the important phenomenon in plagiarism you are committed to plagiarism because of these stuffs okay so number 1 is you might be inexperienced in referencing that is number 1 and number 2 is like you might have some issues in writing way of the topic right okay and number 3 is you are prone to commit grammatic mistakes so what you will do you will simply just copy paste from someone's article and the next one is like once you have copy paste you fail to proofread or edit it that may be because of your inexperience or because or because of lack of time anything can happen right and the next thing is you may come in plagiarism without considering the target audience you may think that the paper you are writing the article you are writing will be reviewed by a low level expertise no it is not like that so always when you write a article you should be aware like so what will be the targeted audience like how the re reviewers will think or how the readers will think of your paper so whenever you write a article you need to think about the plagiarism because of the targeted audience as well right and the next one is like misleading tone of the article i have seen few researchers like they have written an awesome paper but the problem is the flow so they are not concurrent about their concept so what indeed they will do is they they just simply commit to a plagiarism because of the inexperience and the and and because of the lack of technical expertise in that area so that is the reason why they may mislead uh, to the plagiarism content and the next thing is like you with this is the one of the problem which we are facing nowadays right we used to compare with your peers with our colleagues like they have published a paper and i need to do it in a very fast in a super way so how to do that so you might have got a paper from the internet and you try to replicate the same so there and there come the plagiarism part and the next thing uh, folks i can tell you like this is pretty important for all of us like academic pressure as an academic guy so our integrity is like uh, so you need to have a publication in a, in a journals so we pressurize ourselves and what indeed we do is we used to i mean replicate the contents of others to make the content very fast and to get uh, to a published level these are the few parameters where i have analyzed personally like 
this is the reason for getting into a plagiarism <coughs> right and the next thing i i i want to tell you like if i want to avoid from plagiarism what i am supposed to do so what i can do so i also from experience i am going to give you a few tips and i can call it as a few steps once if you follow this and definitely i can tell you Good you morning, can you can exit from plagiarism right yeah i am coming to the point like so whenever you thought that you are in a plagiarism stuff so what you have to do is you want to do a paraphrasing so what is that paraphrasing and how to do that and what are the things i need to take into your mind when i want to do paraphrasing right so the first thing you want to do it so please guys so whenever you are writing a content please you when you are trying to access some other content number 1 is you need to read the original article carefully not once twice and i suggest you to read it at least thrice so once you have completed that what you can do is you need to just highlight the keywords it means i to say uh, unlike uh, you might have impressed the few contents from the existing paper which you are keen to get it out so what you need to do is you need to highlight that that is the number 2 and number 3 what you can do is you just take the key terms which you have highlighted and you can do copy and you can paste it in a different in a, in a different document right then the next thing is to is to i mean is to close the original one because now we are not going to worry about the original content because already we have read the original article and we have come up with the key terms and now we have now we have taken the, uh, the things which is required for our research and once that is done and what you can do is and we need to re I think there is a network issue. Uh, sir, will be back. You have to wait. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry for that. No issues. Yeah. So coming to the point, it is. So coming to the point, it is like. so once you have identified the key term you need to rewrite into according to your original things okay and once that is done what you have to do is and you need to double check it means that you need to check all the contents which you have written in the original way and you need to compare that with the original content once you are okay with that and the next point is like that you need to do a citation it is the reference which i am going to cover probably in the later part of this slide Okay. so once you have written in your in your original style then the next thing is like citations you need to give a reference <coughs> right and next this is what uh, i i i used to hear from lot of lot of people like you that whether plagiarism is only applicable for text no it is not like that so whenever we say plagiarism plagiarism is applicable for text and plagiarism is even applicable for images and and applicable for audio as well so it, <coughs> so in any so in any forms right so in any forms of plagiarism is always called as plagiarism right so it means that even if you could use image of others or even if you could use videos of others or audios of others that is simply called as plagiarism so i will avoid this okay tell you right so so example like so you are keen to use a image of others like okay so what you have to do is the number one is like 
So you want to ask a permission, for like, sir, can I use this? So I mean, am I permitted to use this image in article? So can I? Uh, so so can I have your rights? So once he is okay, what we can do is uh, we can we can get the particular authors, particular owner, and we can cite that content. Whole process like. Number one, you can see here, right? So I, I need to use the image with the proper citation. And there comes the real problem. Say, for example, you are trying to access some image, but you are not sure, like, who is the owner of that image. So what will be the point? So it's very simple. What you can do is you can find an alternate image, right? Okay. Try to find the alternate image. And please, guys, I request you and I recommend you don't use the image without getting the proper, I mean, proper permission from the owner, right? Okay. So once you get that, you can use that. And another problem, like, so you can ask me, sir, you are asking me, like, if I get the permission from the owner, can I use the same image? That is dishonest. That is unethical. What you have to do is you need to add some comp, like, that is what I, 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 I have given you, right? Okay, see, if the permission is given, so what you can do is you can see, you, you can use the same image, but you, but the same image in the sense, try to make some modifications and please write, here I have given you like we can use the image with the citations. Thing. So I have given you an example of a page, right? So what so what is the content for videos, voice, and music? Right. Okay. So the same every stuff. If you are trying to copy something, some videos or some musicians from someone, what you have to do is you need to get a copyright from the owner. I mean, without that, no, it is not recommended. It is not suggested to use their content. Right. So, so and, and the next question is like, you can ask me like, sir, you have told me the permission from the owner and what's the next step? And the next step we call that as in was in citations. I have given you a two examples like where you could find the let so, so so let us take an example like so I have taken a content from Steve, which is pop. So I am using this content. Okay. So what I can do is I can use this format, right? Okay. So always when you do some in-text citations, guys, please don't forget to quote something. It means I need to tell you like you need to give it by by double quotes. That is what given you. It's all double quotes. See, I have given you through double quotes. Okay. And the next you can find this. See. I have used, okay? So I have used this content and I have made an in, insect citations here like seeds. So this is what the content I have taken from this. So this is how you need to cite the contents if you have taken from the others. And guys, this is applicable for Derek plagiarism, Mosaic plagiarism, and and I'm telling you, please, the, the harmful and the dishonest, unethical way is use plagiarism. So even it is not recommended, uh, I mean, to commit plagiarism without unintentionally or accidentally. <clears throat> right. And the next thing. And you can ask me, why do I need to give it through quotes? So, I mean, what is the reason for it? And what is the benefit I'm getting out of it? Right. So it is like, see, when you do a citation, see, uh, guys, you can look into this image. This will give you a closer look at and, and what happens when you cite and when you give the content in a double quotes. So number one is when you do a citation with quotation mark, the readers, the, re the readers of your papers will understand that, oh, guy, right, this guy has taken something from from the some from some someone's and he have just cited that this is good way so readers will give a good will will think of a good impression about you like so this guy is completely ethical guy this guy is not unethical guy and he is completely honest towards his research right and number two is like what if i'm doing a citation and if 
and really without no quotation mark it means so this passage information expressed in your words so what you can do is so you are trying to take some content this is what i have given you as a direct plagiarism you are trying then and you are trying to paraphrase it and what you can do it there then there comes you you i mean you cannot and you should not and it is not mandatory to give the things in a uh, i mean inside the quotes right and the third point like okay if if there is no citation no quotation at oh guy this guy is a super guy so he have written the paper in his own words so all the results interpretation methodologies which we have which he have used is completely his own stuff <laughs> right and 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 this is very important I, like i want to tell you like uh, i have told you like how we can cite the uh, text and it comes to the point you could ask me like sir you are saying me like how could we uh, cite the text and i have given you and the question is how can i cite the secondary source or something like how can i cite yeah how can how can i cite the equations of others or how can i cite the tables of others so how can i do that right it's very simple what i can do is guys i have given format like so i have taken on equation right and you can clearly find that i have given the reference link at the bottom like this equation l and this equation is taken from the source of proceedings of i triple e right this is how you need to uh, cite the equations and also and i have found that we have a like that we can we can cite the equations but the content is you need to cite it out okay that is pretty much important right and 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 coming to the next thing right so it is like so how we can so how we can cite the table so you can ask me sir is this a way to cite a table yes of course there is there are lot of ways to cite a table and it is always recommended if you use any table you cite it and you can also use the table of other right so this is how you can cite it out right see i am i am i am just using the table from smith and what you can do is i have given a content like this no So this data taken by Smith, Brown, and West, right? And this, and th you can, and what you can do is you need to, and you need to give the citations like that. And the next point, right? Okay. So I have, I have told you like how we can cite the text, how we can cite the equations, and how we can cite the tables. And the next thing is like you are asking me, sir, when I am trying to take some image through online. so and how do i how do i cite it and and these and and and, and you can guys you can find a slide something like i have given you like, like where uh, and how we can cite it out right so this so this so so, so sorry ko iran and government ne jo hai iran wale ko bahar nikala tha wo log quarantine mein the इटली So see, this is how you need to use a format. Like I need to emphasize, like who is the owner of this image and what is the title of the work and when it was created and what is the version, right? Okay. And access because whenever we write the paper, research paper, we use do Wikipedia and you can and once you click in the left side of the Wikipedia, there you can find. A, like yeah the the option called cite this page and if you want to cite this page once you click that and you will have a url uh, the, probably yeah, well. that in the format of apa chicago right you will have a lot of formats that i will be covering at the last right so you can copy paste that and you can use the uh, so you can link and and you can cite that 
<coughs> and next and this and this this is pretty much important right so i have told you guys like uh, what to do when we are when we are working on in in text citations and and i have we have to do when we are trying to cite someone's equation or when we are trying to cite someone's uh, table or images and the next question is can i take something but probably by twitter or facebook or gmail right yes of course right yeah you can take that provided i have given you a few formats like how you need to cite it right okay if you are using any social media content name me hello yes hello yeah abdul ghani sir you are trying to ask me something hello yeah fine so coming to the point right okay so uh, just i'm so 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 let me take a small example like okay if i want to cite a content of youtube so what i have to do right so it's a very simple so i, I just think i'm going to take the format of apa right okay so what i have to do is this is the scale where i need to form so i need to start with the last name i so i need to start with the last name and the first initial and the title of the video and the retreat from youtube this is a, and this is very peculiar and guys i can tell you right so most of the most of the researchers will get off pride and they are not aware like whether they are i mean sorry whether they can use the content from the youtube and how to cite it so i have given you tips like you can use the youtube content or any other social media content but guys do don't forget to cite it out okay and the and these are the things how you can even cite the things from twitter as well right so this is how you can do it and the next thing is very pretty much important like and you are getting a mail from someone and you want to have that into your paper and 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 can you have that yes of course definitely you can have that yes so how so it's very simple you can you, you can find it out the law this is called as in in text citations only it's very simple you can give it as a personal communication and in the month and the day and the year right and this is very important like and you can ask me sir so far you are just speaking about the citation i mean say how to do inside the equation styles how to cite tables images and the social media sites and the next question is and we and and how to cite them so generally when we write a paper we do citations based on the journal criteria so each journal comes up with a different criteria different journal styles and uh, for your understanding i have worked up with styles right so always as far as research is concerned i recommend uh, you to use a ieee style okay so you could ask me like sir what is this ieee style csc chicago ml and apa so guys it's very simple you know you you no need to get panic it's a matter of a formatting it's a matter of a style okay even i have given you the domain like if you are if you are an engineering guy if you are working in a computer science or if you are working in information science so i recommend i suggest you to use ieee style right so say for example you are from a biology you are from a, you are basically a natural science guy what you can do is you can use a style of csv right and basically you could uh, you could ask me like sir i am a i am a guy from english literature so i i i want to work in communications and and the preferred style is mla right right and this is where and and this is and this is pretty much funny guys right so generally we we could have come across the points like so how to copy paste uh, without plagiarism so play bypass plagiarism checker and simple trick to avoid plagiarism P please i request you please don't get into this anymore there are a lot of things called qualit rewrite the article so what you can do is you just copy paste your content into that so automatically it will rewrite it will para paste it but uh, when you have a closer look at it the meaning will be entirely changed so i request i recommend you like don't ever try these kind of stuffs like bypass plagiarism checker or or there are a lot of things like qualit like please don't do that you have a content like article rewriter please don't ever do that so when you want to target any journal you need to write a paper by your own 
so probably the only difference between these funny stuffs and your and and, and your knowledge is that uh, the the time probably if you do this you, the time will be delayed and if you do by your own the problem with the time apart from that everything will be okay right so then the next this is very common so what we will do is a very simple we will just copy and we will just paste right okay so how to avoid this okay right so how to protect yourself right so number one okay and i want to tell you guys i want to share you the policy of few countries so as a researcher i want to share you the policy of uh, of india and us because whenever you are committed to a, a plagiarism you, when they find that you are plagiarism you you are prone to plagiarism then i mean the evidence is very serious right it is completely very serious right so in the case of ieee you are banned for around 10 years you are not supposed to have a publication in ieee for 10 years right and when coming to india now the now our indian our indian government is closely working with this and the government have already announced a policy like whenever you publish an article the plagiarism content need to be around 10% and you can ask me sir i have unfortunately published a paper with 40 to 50% so what will be the consequences so if you are caught for this the thing is that you are not to get promoted so you will not get promotion for a year or two years so i request you and i recommend you and i advise you please whenever you write any article make sure that the plagiarism content should be 10 and below 10 so these are the few tips i have given you right and and guys please don't forget to cite it when when uh, when you copy content from others right and the next thing and you could ask me sir i am writing an article and, and and i could find very very difficult to cite the contents is there any tool available yes of course there are a lot of free tools available which i could tell you like a uh, mendeley in node repworks and zotero right so these are pretty simple guys you don't want to spend even a single penny when you want to use it and moreover the advantage of zotero is like you can have a browser extension as well so once you do that once you use that content what it does it is automatically gives you <laughs> so it's art so it's automatically gives you some insight citation i will give you a small example like so you have downloaded a paper in pdf you are trying to take the content from that what you can do is just cop just open that pdf and just copy the content and just right click it and once you do it open with zotero it will open the content and automatically you will get the reference of that okay so this is pretty much important and we call this as is the all citation softwares guys please whenever you write a so write article please use this this is this is pretty much useful and this is very simple to use <coughs> and for your clear understanding i have worked on the statistics of uh, of a tool like you could you could ask me like sir you have told me like there are around uh, are an hell number of tools available and 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 which is the best one to use it and for your convenience i have worked a few steps like and and how how and what are the things available in mendeley and zotero so so whenever i request you to always use mendeley or zotero from my experience right so because i so, so both mendeley and zotero are free and both mendeley and zotero gives you a file and pdf management as i have told you uh, already right and now this is of import of pdf annotations and now in the current version zotero supports pdf annotations i have told you already guys we are op you can open a pdf of of in a, of an another article and you just copy and you just select it and you just right click it and there's a option called annotate once you click that and automatically that will be annotated and that will be reflected in your zotero with the proper citations and what you can do it once that is done you can do all the paraphrasing right and you could ask me like sir i am using mac i am not a fond of windows user yes see i mean mendeley and zotero works for mac linux and you, and even if we have a web version but i never recommend you to web version so always please do download a software and use it right <clears throat>
okay right and the problem with the zotero and mandalay is you don't have mind maps as a researcher we i mean we i mean we should not worry about that so that mind maps is 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 generally used when we try to organize our paper when we try to originate our article that is meant for paper organization that you can do it by using ms office as well <laughs> right and for your convenience i have worked on few statistics like mendeley and zotero and i have come up with when to use mendeley and when to use zotero right and 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 you and you could see guys like when you are starting a new project right and you are asking me like sir i am going to use mendeley right so it's good right so it is not at all important right so zotero it is not unimportant so i request you like when you are starting a new project please start with mendeley right because mendeley is very much important when you are starting a new project right and coming here and once the project is started and you are in the phase of implementation what i mean implementation in the sense organization what i recommend you use is i again i use you can use mendeley right okay and when you are writing i suggest you to use zotero than mandali because i ha i had a huge experience in using zotero than mandali right so you could whenever you writing a content you could use zotero right and when you are using a manuscript for submission please we do a double check right so when you are doing a double check i request you to again check it through mandali right do it okay and once this is done what you can do is you can disseminate the manuscript by using mendeley so again folks it is like the choice is yours either you can use mendeley or zotero but as a personal note i can tell you but as a personal note i can tell you like you can use mendeley a lot rather than zotero but now zotero guys are working closely they are working i mean they are, they are coming with new features and now and browser integrations as well so we can work a lot with zotero so now the choice is yours it is based on your convenience as well <coughs> right and the next thing is i want to tell you like so when you are in doubt so please just cite it okay so right so when if you have a doubt like i have copy paste sometime but i now i don't reckon it so what you can do is it's very simple you just cite it out okay <coughs> this is what i want to tell you please <clears throat> so guys thank you so much right okay so so right so so thank you so much so if you are interested to i mean for the collaboration right what you can do is i have given you my link rain i have given you the address of my web page and even i have given my whatsapp number as well right so we can i mean i mean we can connect in either means right yeah so i mean so the 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 forum is open for questions right thank you lakshman sir thank you so much sir uh, if anyone have any query then he, uh, they can ask so sir will answer sir there is a jan he is asking please explore more for plagiarism as every time facing some issues on it sorry ma'am sorry Uh, there is one question for you please explore more for plagiarism as every time facing some issues on it ma'am can you please come again please what is the question is about okay okay sir please explore more for plagiarism as every time facing some issues on it uh, so, uh, so it is like can you please tell me what are the sir, this is the question this is the question actually sir this question comes from jian singh he just uh, want you have to explore more for plagiarism so he i mean he he is just asking on the plagiarism okay okay so uh, so the thing is that he i mean he want to tell me like what are the issues he is facing so what we can do is we uh, we can help him out like because i paraphrasing right 
So what you can do is, so you, I think you are not clear about paraphrasing. Once you are clear about paraphrasing, you will not ever face the issue of plagiarism, sir. So kindly work something on paraphrasing. Okay, sir. One question is, uh, what is your take on Turnitin as a as a software for plagiarism? Turnitin? I'm sorry, Turnitin. Uh, what is your take on Turnitin as a software for plagiarism? Yes. See, turn. See, I I I want to tell you like Turnitin is just a piece of software which identifies all the plagiarism content, right? Okay. So always I recommend you when you write an article, you need to have a plagiarism check. And there are there are a lot of softwares are available in the market like Turnitin, iAuthenticate. Both are from same vendors. And always you do a check with a paper. You sorry, you do a check your paper in Turnitin. And once that is done, then you can start plagiarism. Then you can do a paraphrasing. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir, uh, one Abhishek Go is asking how to avoid plagiarism in reference. Sometimes journals consider plagiarism in reference also. Yes. So, so what I suggest to you is when, so the first thing is you are writing an article. You are, you are paraphrasing by your own stuffs. And the next thing you want to check it by using a Turn it in software or write it in. So whenever you are doing that, what you can do is just simple. You just delete all the references. I mean, I, I mean to say you that you just delete the reference section and, and, and you do a check. And once that is done, then it is fine. So always journals will ignore the plagiarism. Uh, I mean, play, uh, plagiarism count, which you encounter in the, in the reference section. So just ignore that. That is not a great deal. Sir, one more question. I have to publish two papers from my PhD, but the background information will be the same. How to avoid the so-called plagiarism in such a case? That's question <coughs> from Diljit. So I think, yes. So now, now, now from this question, I can understand you are trying to encounter plagiarism called self-plagiarism. So the only way to do is no, to extend your paper, to incorporate few more staffs, Rewrite an article, uh, probably 30% more, and you can publish it anywhere. And uh, is there any free plagiarism checker? <laughs> that is what I used to tell you. Like, please, guys, yes, we are professionals, right? So always don't get it for free, right? Because free is always free. If you yes. do any, it's free. So yeah, so you are thinking like if you if you are free from errors, no, definitely no. So please, guys, spend something right, and you will have a worth of it, please. Because How uh, this is very important. See, I, I I I I want to tell you like, see, plagiarism can harm your reputation and your career. This is very very important, right? This is. This is very, this is this is very very important because we may, I mean we, I mean we may think that why I want to spend few penny on it, but definitely if you spend few penny and you can earn much important. So nothing is free in this world. Yes. How can minimize plagiarism from number and single words? So that is what I'm telling you. Like you need to, you need to paraphrase it properly. So I, so I want to tell you, like folks, from your question, I can understand that the article you are trying to write uh, is not organized. So I, I, I'm wondering, like, whenever you write an article, so you start with abstract introduction, right? So that is wrong. So whenever you write an article. From my experience, what I will do is always I start with results and discussions. The first thing I start is I start with results and discussions. And after that, I write methodologies. And after that, I write introduction and conclusion. And finally, I write abstract. This is how you need to do it. Once you do this, and definitely you will never end up in plagiarism. So you will never end up in these problems. 
this is how you need to write an article always we are working from top to bottom approach please that is completely wrong so try to work it out from the bottom to up thank you so much sir uh sir. paraphrasing is the only way to reduce plagiarism yes ma'am uh, sir how can remove plagiarism of the name of author is it possible <laughs> <laughs> sorry please can you please no it is not, no it not, it is not possible not possible yes it's not possible because you are stealing almost almost the content of others you are just removing their name see they are having all the rights to file a complaint against you please once the complaint is raised then you will end up in something i mean you i mean uh, even you can lost the job you cannot publish in publishers with it i to p as well right so this is this is pretty much important this is a serious issue as well please yes so send one more question if yes, we click plagiarism on two different online free sites and get it to uniqueness is it okay no <laughs> no so because when you are trying to check the plagiarism of your content with 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 many uh, with different vendors the program style which they have used is entirely different so how can i trust them so that is the reason why i am requesting you like please do use turnkey or right authenticate whenever you check whenever you work on plagiarism uh sir one more question what about self plagiarism i can copy paste my paper in my thesis yes of course but there is another problem like you should not copy the entire content from your paper you can use 30 percentage of the content from your previous paper how can we remove the plagiarism from instrument's name no this no the oh, what is this no how we can do this say for example i am trying to use a component from cisco how can i supposed to say that i'm i i'm just using the device from cisco and i am just naming this as lakshman device no this is <laughs> no you are absolutely right yeah we cannot use that that is that is dishonest yeah. that is unethical i cannot have the name as so it is mean you are asking me like this session is hosted by x not by lakshman right so this is plagiarism <laughs> Yeah. Best example, sir. That is a good example. Can we write the same method of experiment one paper to other? Yes, but with refinements. So I want to give you a small example. Like you are working. Uh, let us imagine, like you are a data science guy. You are working something on machine learning. You are using a small algorithm for uh, for super classification. Let us give an example for classification. and there are a lot of example uh, algorithms already available like multi class classification decision jungle and you can ask me sir can i use the same algorithm yes but provided with some refinements because when you use the same algorithm in your paper then that is not called as a research there is the novelty in your work got it yes. so you need to work on some hybrid stuffs thank you sir sir uh, kavita is asking which is the best authentic uh, paraphrasing tool <laughs> so the best uh, authentic paraphrasing tool is your mind <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> yes you are right sir sorry hello sir hello sir yes sir But hello, sir. Uh, sir, now, uh, sir, you said that uh, double quotation to write the eliminate plagiarism. Suppose author name, author name should copy the author name. Use to same author means different uh, authors to take the paragraph, one paragraph. Use the double quotation to avoid the plagiar same uh, plagiarism, same paragraph. Suppose use the double quotation. 
double quotation sir no sir no sir double quotation is for different stuff yes double sir quotation for different things where you used double quotation sir double quotation is for sir can you hear me yes sir yes sir double quotation sir, is for can you hear me yes sir yes sir yes sir no sir double no. quotation is for different stuffs i will give you a clear example yes, see yes. sir have a close look at this so i am just telling this this session is hosted by lakshman okay, okay. and okay. you are using you are going to use the same content in your paper same content same okay? content yeah. huh. same content it doesn't mean that you can use the same paragraph 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 from all the articles and use it in a double quotation and you will end up in a plagiarism no a few words where your technical words you cannot do paraphrasing there are few no. words where you cannot use paraphrasing you need to give that in double quotes okay sir that is so, what i am emphasizing sir suppose suppose algorithms suppose you have take algorithm sir algorithm so may use double quotation for algorithm algorithm no algorithm sir no sir no no, no algorithm sir only paragraph no. double quotation is for only paragraph sir no it is not double quotation is for words words it's for it's for technical words technical words ha uh ha -huh. okay sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much sir yes, sir uh, sir two more questions uh, one is from uh, the student uh, that you. want to ask blockchain suitable for phd as there is not much data available regarding to the same yes so the answer is if you have any doubt in blockchain you can contact me directly because basically we are ai in blockchain researcher we are working with a lot of countries as well so uh, so we can discuss a lot uh, in i mean uh, personally moreover privately because i i think this is not the right platform to discuss about uh, technical stuffs like blockchain and ai so because yes uh, yes uh, we don't want to waste this time i'm sorry right you could i mean you can contact us directly or you can contact through meenakshi ma'am right so we can have a brief discussion thank you sir so where to take data and how to use that thank you and uh, uh, one dr dilip he is asking if we use actually we need permission from you because it is originated uh, originated from your paper yes, yes. so the yes the ethic see the the ethical way is to take a take a image from my paper right and refine it and cite and, and cite my name and you can use it out and there's another thing called i triple image analytics where what you can do is you can take the image and you try to improve the paper uh, sorry improve uh, sorry improve the picture through lot of tools then you can use it but please i recommend you don't use the image as of my paper please that is unethical uh, sir one is dr dk pande he asks can we code as well as institution organization like who uh, etc sorry ma'am can you please come again ma'am if you permit am i yes sir hello sir i am dr pandey ma'am good morning uh, i will just uh, quote the question uh, sir my question is can we quote uh, data graphics and other vital informations from official government sources as well as uh, international organizations like uh, who uh, ilo unesco etc without yes, taking the uh, without taking the permission no sir no it is not like it. that is sir that is called a secondary source so we call that a secondary source so whenever you use a secondary source right so that is called internet sources right so what you have to do is the i mean the safest way is to cite them okay just cite that i have taken this data from who website i have taken this data from us gown.in website something like that you can you can cite that once you, you you once you cite that then you will be in the safer side 
Okay, means attribution has to be there. Sorry, sir. I should attribute sir, source. Can you please speak come again. Uh, sir, what I'm yes. I should attribute the source where from where I'm getting. Sir, no, 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 no. Sir, please don't confuse the data with the citation. Citation is like where you have taken the data. Okay, so once you have taken, because you might have taken the data from Kaggle, use a repository or any other secondary sources, and there will be lot of attributes. You don't worry about the attributes. You need to concentrate like where we, where I have taken the data. So you just give the citation of that. That is more than enough. Once you have given that, you can use their content for your research. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You are right, sir. Absolutely right, sir. Uh, sir, one question: If I publish my paper during PhD from my thesis with same title, then my thesis will come in category of plagiarism because paper published earlier before thesis submission. No, so that is the reason. Whenever we do a research, we publish a paper with different titles that is based on our work. So our university are giving a privilege like we need to fine tune your title uh, title only when we submit our synopsis. So what you can do is you need to refine your title only when you submit synopsis. So I don't find any plagiarism in the titles. So you can work this. Yes. Uh, sir, that is also a very good question. I think uh, everyone want to know. UGC is recommending for maximum plagiarized content should be less than 10%. And internationally is 20%, 25%, even 30%. Will you suggest which standard is better? So, I, so this is the excellent question I want to answer you like. So, uh, I mean, uh, you are telling like internationally it is accepted as uh, a 25, 30, from the question itself, you can understand that there is no standard for it. Okay? Because if you publish a paper, if you want to publish a paper, I, I recommend <clears throat> So, I recommend you to work a plagiarism of 10%. Or I triple will have a plagiarism count of 15%. Okay. So always it is good if you have anything which is below 20, which is below par 20. Okay. But as far as Indian government is concerned, they are very keen about the plagiarism policy. That is the reason why they are requesting us to have a, uh, I mean, count of 10. So the international standards according to us is 15. So we stick with 15%. All our papers are published with 15%. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, one last question. After that, we will put the questions in your email ID and I'll just take the answers and post to everyone. Sir, one uh, last question is, uh, little of, uh, I want to know what is the importance of author name numbering in research article. As I am the fourth position in my research paper, I am the research scholar from chemistry department. So I want to know the importance of author's numbering. Okay. So this is the good question. I want to tell you like, so whenever, whenever we publish a paper, we publish with our friends, our gurus, like we call it as mentor, right? Okay. So the we are adding the names, we are adding the authors in our paper. It means that all of them have contributed to it. So it doesn't mean that your name comes into your first part, second part, third part or fourth part. It doesn't make any sense. The sense is like who is the corresponding author and who is the first author. Mm -hmm. So it means that corresponding author is always like your mender and the first author is the one who have contributed more. And if you have your name as a second, third, fourth, and fifth, it means that you had you had a contribution in the paper. So it doesn't mean that it doesn't bring a lot of impact, like your name can be second, third, or fourth. So you need to worry whether your name is at the first or at the corresponding author. So that so that matters a lot. 
so that is pretty much important so don't worry about the authors or topology right so if you write a paper you can either be a first author or you can you can be a corresponding author and, and even if you be a second author third author fourth author no it that it doesn't matter a lot because uh, when people when people cite your paper and you will have the count even if you are a second author your count will be one if you are a third author your count will be one or even if you are a corresponding author your count will be one okay so all the authors have the same privilege and the privilege differs only for the first author and the corresponding author and rest of them are even thank you so much sir we are giving a lots of information of the plagiarism self plagiarism how plagiarism is important how the paraphrasing tools we can use thank you so much we will connect it to you uh, thank you uh, anyone thank you. I, i if any have any question then i put it in your mail then i revert to you thank yes, you sir thank you all thank you have 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 a safe day thank you take care Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lakshman, sir. Thank you, Bala, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you all.